It'll be 15 months tomorrow since I was sworn into office as your county executive. To say that this last 15 months has been a whirlwind is an understatement. Perhaps more than any of us could have imagined only a few short months ago, we stand in a very different place today as a community and as an arm of state government. No matter which side of any political continuum you stand on, I think that we can all agree that these times demand us to evaluate our current course and consider refined or alternative pathways toward accomplishing our mission in service to the people of this county. And we have everything going for us in Portage County, the heart of Wisconsin, if we work together. This afternoon, I would like this State of the County Address to achieve two goals. Number one, to recognize a few of our accomplishments over the last 15 months, a period of many firsts for Portage County. And two, to share a vision for Portage County government, a model for your consideration as we continue the strategic planning effort launched earlier this year. Let's start then by highlighting a few of these firsts. Let's use a time frame of at least a decade. That is, if it didn't happen in the past 10 years, it will not qualify as first. For our 2011 tax year, we kept the county levy flat. This was the first time since 1989 that a larger county tax levy burden wasn't created for the citizens of Portage County. Number two, our total county budget amount was smaller this year by about 5% than the previous year under the other county executive. This is a reduction of $1.5 million and the first time in a decade that the proposed county budget didn't grow larger than the year before it all while maintaining or improving the level of service thanks to many innovative staff members. In fact, over the last 20 years, there are only a couple of exceptions to having the budgeted amount grow bigger one year than the year before it. In a recent letter to the editor, a former county board member mentioned that he thought it was a needless expenditure for this county executive position in office, which costs about $250,000 a year for the salary and benefits of my executive assistant, Jamie Gabert, me, and the costs for other purposes like copies or travel. In my first county budget alone, I stopped the runaway trend of growing a bigger budget annually and saved six times the amount of my office expenses at the same time. First, number three. One of the keys to achieving the fiscal control first is that our county, in our county, we redesigned the process used for budgeting, including integrating reorganizations into new budgets. In addition, I issued allocations to each department to challenge them. Number four, another significant first, you, the county board, began your first formal internal audit process and chose the highway department as your first focus. Outside consultants have now completed that audit and the highway commissioner is working with his staff and others in our finance department to correct identified deficiencies and, and improve processes to better protect county resources. First, number five. In, for the first time, Portage County has a comprehensive handle on understanding its electrical and natural gas energy consumption for our facilities and parks thanks to the completion and the very hard work of our smart energy team, the completion of our phase one strategic energy management plan. We have now established a baseline and set a goal for reducing electricity and natural, natural gas consumption by 10% in the calendar year 2015 compared to our baseline year, which is 2009, in which we spent nearly $700,000 on energy related um, costs in our facilities. I applaud you for your vision in setting this ball in motion through a resolution that was passed just days after I came into office last year. And since implementing initiatives identified through the smart energy planning process just over this short period of time, we have saved an estimated $12,000 a year already on low hanging fruit. First, number six. A second phase of our energy planning process is already underway and um, to study transportation fuels used in county government operations, a comprehensive assessment of our vehicle and equipment use of fuels. I expect that uh, energy related policy initiatives will follow phase two as we continue to make strides in reducing the operational costs for energy. Another significant first include 
includes a countywide comprehensive volunteer policy that standardizes our volunteer management practices and provides our first centralized tracking system for hundreds of volunteers across multiple departments who help us accomplish our mission through their generous time and talents. This process created another opportunity for a volunteer to participate in shaping her own community. Mary, an RSVP volunteer supervised by Jamie in my office, uh, now comes into our office weekly to uh, update our central volunteer database. About 40 people on key teams are involved now in another first for Portage County, redesigning our entire personnel management and benefit system in accordance with the governor's budget repair bill, which has changed the breadth and the depth of the role of unions in our workplace. This is a significant undertaking, significant undertaking, by staff, workers, county board members in my office as 86% of our county employees, that is over 550 workers, are members of seven different unions. Combine this with management staff that has their human resource policies too, we have a daunting task before us as we seek common ground and uniformity in our policies and work rules to the greatest extent possible and practicable all with a deadline of October 1, when six of our seven collective bargaining agreements expire. I understand many other counties are watching us to learn from our inclusive process. We have other firsts related to county communications with more e-government initiatives than ever before. Official county board email addresses have now been offered to every county board supervisor to aid them in communicating with their constituents. From my, uh, from my office, um, most of the communications are in an electronic format. Nearly all of our communications, um, um, excuse me, my office also launched the first monthly Portage County e-newsletter for county employees. A copy of Portage County News is not, pr is not only provided to the employees, but to county board members, municipalities, and when it's relevant to the media also. Through listening sessions scheduled quarterly in every quadrant of this county, we also have for the first time regular face-to-face -face contact with citizens in their own communities around the county through these listening sessions. So far on my county rounds, the town of Dewey wins the award for the most participants at a listening session with 22 in attendance. Another first this year is the launch of our strategic planning process across all county departments and in collaboration with their respective oversight committees. We began by having all departments identify their mandates with information to help inspire a discussion about the choices we have in meeting each requirement. We had them identify past relevant studies and conduct an analysis of their strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. We also asked them to identify their space-related needs so that we can gain a broad a picture uh, on a, a county-wide basis of space-related issues. As they say in strategic planning, program drives property. So determining programmatic or service needs will support policymakers such as yourselves here in this room in better overall facility-related decision-making. Also worthy to, of mention as a first is that since going online in February 2009 with Code Red, our automated emergency alert system that citizens can subscribe to free of charge at the Portage County website, there have been two cases when it was utilized, utilized to find lost residents. A lost child in July last year and a lost adult this past April. To give you a synopsis of how it works, I'll share the emergency management report related to the missing person's case about three months ago. At approximately 4 a.m., dispatch received a call reporting a missing 82-year-old man with Alzheimer's disease. At 6.11 a.m., the code red job was launched to 3,337 phone numbers. At 6.33 a.m., a resident called to report her family had started looking for the man and they found him lying in some woods at the base of a hill behind their home. Paramedics arrived, tended to the man, and called firefighters for additional assistance. In less than two and a half hours, thanks to Code Red and citizen volunteers that signed up for this community service, we may have saved that gentleman's life. So throw in two floods, a tornado, the closure of a paper mill causing the loss of 360 jobs, and a leaking dam, 
and serious road closure. We have had our hands full here and we will continue to have our hands heal, here very full in working for Portage County. But we have everything going for us when we work together. So building on our 15 months of firsts in budget control, <coughs> planning, policy, communications, and emergency response, I'd like to propose to you a concept of county government that I believe will advance us further. An e effective and efficient county government to me is one that is as nimble as possible in responding to changing needs and the dynamic times in which we live. As a county organization that looks out for the good of the whole, um, I believe a county government organization that's effective looks out for the good of the whole. It's guided by the voices of many people, not one, not two, or a few. It's responsive, appropriately strong, and smart. There's a balance of power with a measure of earned trust. The priorities of the county as a whole are number one, not the priorities of individuals with their own agendas. It is a respectful workplace where there are high expectations for staff and workers, but where they are also lifted up to meet those challenges. It's accountable and transparent and effective and makes the citizens of Portage County very, very proud to call this home. But right now in Portage County government, there are over 30 different departments or quasi-departments, most with separate budgets and directors and elected leaders in charge. I have 17 direct reports to my office and I coordinate another 11 ele uh, county elected officials reports <coughs> and um, coordinate with the full county board. And there are over 40 different <coughs> oversight committees, commissions, boards, and advisory groups, each with their own administrative costs. Some have been pointed out here tonight. Board packets, per diems, and travel when needed. This is how we've evolved over time. And um, basically this diagram just gives you a, a diagram that you have before you, the diagram on the board here, basically shows we essentially have a silo effect among departments, each vying for a piece of the county levy or the budget pie in order to advance their mission and goals. A worthy cause. It's the way it's evolved over time. But I propose that we consider a different way. I submit to you that many departments or sections of departments share similar mission themes um, with other departments or sections of departments. And what I mean to say is that they share common threads in their mission and they are more alike than they are different. So my second pie diagram with the clusters of colors represents shared themes amongst departments. Some uh, thematic clusters of our county's mission might <coughs> include, for this is just an idea, might include, number one, public safety and emergency response, two, health and human services, or the fostering of resiliency of children, families, and adults, three, infrastructure or public works, natural resources, and planning, four, recreation and culture, five, operational effectiveness and fiscal responsibility, six, economic development, and seven, government services and justice services. And that's not in any priority order. These are only my ideas generated from research about how some other counties have reinvented themselves. There are different ways to focus our mission, and I propose that we discover the right themes, or call them hubs, the yellow hub, the orange hub, and so on and so forth, for the sake of clusters of like departments or like missions. Um, that I propose that we uh, discover these together here in Portage County. Third diagram, please. So let's take a look at an example. Let's take a look at public safety and emergency response. I've just got it depicted in red here as an example. It's represented at its core by two county departments, the Sheriff's Department and the, direct, the Department of Emergency Management. They work very closely already and report to a common oversight committee, the Public Safety and Emergency Management Committee. But could there be additional benefits and savings gained by establishing joint goals and reporting their progress on these goals as a team? But let's consider another example. Infrastructure, I've got it in blue here. Um, this is, um, this is a, a, a mission theme that would relate to, say, the physical infrastructure and layout that help us achieve transportation, environmental, economic development, and other longer-term goals. Departments or parts of departments that share a mission like this um, include highways, solid waste, parks, facilities, and planning and zoning. Each of these five departments has a different oversight committee. 
Most of them have different unions. Um, and prior to Governor Walker's budget repair bill that changed the roles that unions play in our public workplace, it was much more difficult to share staff across departments, not because they didn't want to, but because of the differences that had evolved through the collective bargaining agreements, like different policies and work rules and seniority rights and so on. And so that complicated our ability to interdepartmentally share staff. Now with our new normal to begin on October 1st, we may be able to swing resources, swing workers uh, across units depending on jobs, needs, the worker, and the opportunity. Here's an example. Parks, facilities, and highway departments all plow snow. Would it make any sense to share teams or equipment? Are there other job linkages worth exploring? And what about collaborative budgeting and shared performance goals? Would there be any savings in oversight committees and costs associated with those committees? Of course, certain commissions or boards are required by statute, and sometimes there are reasons that budgets must be kept separate. But do you wonder, like I do, what the advantages in service to our mission would be if we adopted an organizational design that emphasized collaboration and established shared performance goals across mission hubs? There are many questions and ways to go about creating our next generation of county government. I would love to explore the choices with you and the citizens of Portage County. This would be another significant undertaking, but I believe that exploring ways to re-engineer county government is the right thing to do. I propose that we work together over the next two years beginning in January 2012, to explore the possibilities and discover the best answers together. County leadership, staff, workers, municipalities, and the citizens of our county. Transition times are times of opportunity. We've come a long way together in only 15 months. Let's see where the challenging times and this momentum can take us in optimizing our ability to provide awesome service to our residents. We have everything going for us in Portage County when we work together, stay at the table, and keep our mission at heart. Thank you.